Hello and welcome back to Europa Universalist 4. I am Lord Fortwind, here with another achievements kind of country guide. This time it is the Baltic Crusader. Um, at least scroll down to it. Um, as the Teutonic or the Livonian Order, obviously these two, own all of Russia as core provinces and convert it to Catholic. Now it says Russia, but it doesn't actually mean just Russia, and this is important. It means the Pontic Steppe, Ural, and Russia. So, um, you don't actually need any of Ruthenia or of Central Asia or of the Baltic to do this achievement, even though Russia usually ends up conquering those. You kind of need this really weird making country here. Um, and then you have to convert it all to Catholic, which isn't that hard, seeing as it's Orthodox. And late in the game, you can get a lot of conversion modifiers. <laughs> Quite a few. So, um... I decided I would do it as the Teutonic Order, which is definitely the easy order to do it with. Uh, the Livonian Order um, can't use the starting strategy that the Teutons use, which is join the HRE immediately. I did a whole guide on that, so if you want to figure out how to do that, go watch that. But essentially, I'll just summarize. You get a diplomatic reputation advisor, improve relations with Austria, send them gifts, ally them, anything that gets your opinion up with them. Uh, you join, and that makes you safe from any advances done by Poland-Lithuania, who, by the way, I just never bothered finishing off. Um, once you do that, you are fully capable of expanding, ex expanding into the HRE. Uh, I particularly targeted Pomerania because, you know, it's actually pretty good development land up there, uh, and they're relatively easy to conquer. Once you join the HRE, you're probably... I'd say the third strongest nation in the HRE, behind Austria and maybe behind Bohemia. It's not entirely. You can, never, you can fight them, but I was allied to them. They're a really good ally against the initial Polish wars. And, and then I conquered all the way over to here. Um, Sweden killed Denmark, pretty much, so I snagged a couple of the Danish provinces. Kept an alliance with the Livonian Order all game. Uh, they proved to be my most reliable ally, seeing as they don't actually require your land. And their ideas are half decent. Um, big reason you want to take the Teutons is for their idea group. You've got cavalry combat ability and discipline straight off, which means for the first uh, 10 years of the game, 10, 15 years of the game, um, once you take, a, if you take a morale advisor, you probably have the single strongest army in the game in terms of bonuses. Because cavalry is really good early on, and discipline is okay, but once you take morale, you've covered all your bases. Um, this doesn't mean you should take any more cavalry um, than you would normally in a nation, just because 10% is good, but it's not as crazy as like Poland's 50 or 60%. Um, to fin when you finish it, you get 10% institution spread. But the big other stuff is infantry cavalry cost is terrible. Recruit peasants for manpower recovery speed is actually really good. It allows you to fight much larger empires, recover, and keep fighting. Uh, adjust our infantry tactics. 10% infantry combat is very solid. This is the key one, though. Assume religious authority plus two missionary strength, which is key if you're going to convert Orthodox or even Protestant or Reformed lands. And then yearly popple influence also means that you can, you know, get wonderful free stability, illegitimacy, you know, reduce taxes, greater money. Um, when you are a holy order, um, it actually stacks really well with your... Um, drawing a blank on what it's called, um, devotion, there we go. It really stacks really well with your devotion because you get uh, huge amounts of tax income. Uh, you can make a lot of money just from even your small starting provinces. Uh, then your next one is uh, expand the marches, fort defense, which is nice because you don't really have any terrain defense bonuses on your lands or even when you expand into Russia. So that little bit of defensive means your forts hold longer. Uh, promote Prussian bishops gives you a, another missionary. And then to finish it, one state, one religion, plus one tolerance of the two faith. Not hugely strong. The strongest parts of the Teutons' ideas are definitely the infantry combat, missionary strength, fort defense, cavalry combat, and discipline. Uh, but the recruit peasants is not to be underestimated either. But some of these other ones, not the most useful ones. Um, early on, you start as a holy order, so you have to figure out who you want uh, as an heir, I tended to take the talented theologians till I realized that the foreign nobles tended to have better stats and improved relations. 
So I would jump between those two depending on which estate was unhappy with me at the time. Obviously, don't if forget to exploit your states. The only downside is that since you're a holy order, the clergy require a large amount of your land. Um, so be very careful of them um, getting 80 influence. It happened to me almost a couple times. I stopped it. Uh, in terms of ideas, defensive ideas is really strong since you don't have any morale bonuses and you'll be fighting countries with morale bonuses if you fight Poland, the Ottomans, and if you ever end up fighting any of the other nations, the morale just puts you on a slightly lower footing. Uh, it's important to note that as large as I am right now, I couldn't really beat the Timurids or France in a war because of their insane uh, morale. Uh, they pretty much have six or seven morale, so even with almost six myself and almost 25 discipline I was having trouble. So just be aware of that. Uh, Russia and the Ottomans on the other hand, the two nations you'll most likely be fighting for this area, um, they don't tend to take morale stuff so you can usually crush them. Um, so defensive ideas, strong for the morale, also the reduced attrition, fort defense. Uh, if you're a holy order you get negative 20% fort maintenance, this will give you negative 30, which means you can support a lot more forts than you'd expect. Uh, I went administrative, and I recommend you do too, mainly just for the core creation cost, but also for the number of states. Um, you end up having a lot of land, but of course trying to get states. These are This is the most states I could actually do when I got the achievement. It's 1735. Um, so just putting that in perspective, otherwise I'd have a lot less states. And also the admin tech cost is kind of nice. I went quality ideas, stack the infantry and cavalry combat ability. So we actually have stats in every single um, category for our land units, uh, which is really strong. It uh, also helps with your ships if you end up fighting Sweden and Denmark a lot. To be fair though, their fleets are always going to be a lot stronger than yours. Uh, I had lost a couple hundred galleys trying to fight over the Baltic, and in the end it didn't work that way. Um, also, just the discipline and everything. Influence ideas you definitely need to take. You can almost swap it with quality ideas, but I wanted the quality to fight the initial wars with Russia and continue the wars with Poland Lithuania. Um, influence you want solely for the state propaganda. 20% reduced expansion is huge. Uh, it allows you to take you know tons of land in a war. Quantity, just for the sheer amount of manpower you're going to be burning versus Russia and the Ottomans. And if the Timurids survive, them. Uh, they've got a lot of units. Plus, you get the reduced land attrition and a greater army size. Uh, it just allows you to fight roughly on the same footing as these guys. Uh, we could have 100 more troops, we just can't support it. <laughs> uh, economic ideas, just only because you just need the money. But also because if you combine economic ideas with quality up at the top, weapon standard quality... Uh, you get another 5% discipline, which is really, it gets you close to 125. And then I was going offensive just because my generals were always inferior to everyone else's. Um, in terms of expansion, though, once you've taken over the HRE lands, it's worth trying to take the core Polish lands. I was allied with Bohemia together once I was this large. I, was, I think I was already almost a great power at that point. Um, it was pretty easy to beat up Poland-Lithuania once they lost a war against either the Ottomans or Russia. Stole, you know, this area. Took multiple wars. Uh, at some point, Poland lost a union over Lithuania, at which point I just focused on Lithuania. Broke through to Russia, tried to prevent Russia from conquering Lithuanian land. Uh, this was before I realized you don't actually need uh, the Ruthenian region. Um, Ruthenia. Uh, so some of that was pointless, but it also gives you enough development to fight Russia. Then I pretty much waited till Russia went to war with the Ottomans over the Crimea in this region. Uh, I also allied myself to a France that was doing very well. But if France is not doing well, ally yourself to Bohemia. And if Austria is doing well, you can ally yourself to them. I almost got an alliance with the Ottomans versus the Russians, just because the Ottomans hated the Russians that much, and we both rivaled them. Uh, once you expand, you'll get power projection too, so you're going to have lots of monarch points to burn, but you do need a lot of them to maintain this land. Um, once you invade Russia, the first thing I tried to do was I tried to cut them off from uh, Denway, Denway, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden so that they couldn't get involved. So I took this area here, cut them also off from the Teutonic Order because I didn't want to lose them as an ally. Uh, the next war, I pretty much cut them off uh, in the south, I think I took all of this 
pretty much. Uh, I did have a couple little words for Snow Guy and Gosmonk here just to pick up the remaining land I needed. Uh, but I pretty much built a wall straight up from the Urals. And then I just surrounded and wiped out Russia. To be fair, Russia also got pounced on by Korchin in Korea too. This was a weird game because the Ottomans died. Uh, I'm going to just quickly show you guys the timeline of expansion to show what I would recommend you do for growth if possible. Um, so uh, I'll do it like this. So um, obviously the first things that happen is a, I think I actually vassaled Pomerania rather than conquering them just so I didn't get a coalition. Um, but there we go. Uh, yeah, I must have vassalized them. At this point, we're already one of the larger nations in the HRE, and it's just a simple matter of expansion. Uh, at some point, though, you do want to secularize. It takes you to, like, Admin Tech 20. But once you do that, you can get a monarchy on the throne, and it doesn't break the uh, achievement requirements. You just can't change into Prussia. Um, which, If you want to form Prussia, this is the easiest way to do it now, I found. Brandenburg's more accurate, but this is fun, too. As you can see, breaking of Poland, uh, took some land from them. Russia's been formed. Oddly enough, the Ottomans never conquered the Mamluks. I don't know what happened there. But as you can see, there we go. We've got the border with Russia. Almost cut them off from Lithuania. Just I didn't want Russia taking more land. And let's see, we're going to have another war here. Uh, we pretty much don't fight Russia until we get Lithuania under control. We don't even expand into the HRE. You could have gone further into the HRE. So there we go. We've got them. At this point, I secularize, and immediately Lithuania gets a personal union over Sweden, which was crazy because I was able to easily beat Lithuania in Union Sweden. At this point, the Russian wars cut them off from this region in case I lost the union over Sweden, which I missed by like a day. And there we are. Cut them off. I did need two more provinces, but I couldn't see them. And at this point... Uh, there was a brief war versus the Ottomans. I launched a second war versus the Ottomans with the aid of the Austrians while they were fighting the Mamluks. Stole that, finished off Russia, and then it was just pretty much a matter of I need to annex Sweden for this one province of Vyborg. And then it was conversion. So that's what I recommend for routes of expansion. Obviously, it's not the easiest to deal with. Um, we almost suffered through a revolution in aspiration for liberty, just because at one point we lost stability. Um, we're also running around with 83 absolutism, plus the coring cost from admin. Means that most of these provinces were like 10 or 12 admin points. So, uh, anyhow, that's pretty much it. Um, you do want to develop your basic lands. Your basic forts here you have are really... Um, Fairly well positioned. I built a second one here. Uh, I think this kept prosperity pretty much the whole game. I don't think anyone ever sieged down this area. Uh, other than that, um, this is kind of what happened to the world. Very weird. Mamluk survived. Pope got big. Russia never really expanded much. Poland, Lithuania broke. France and Portugal killed Castile. Um, but obviously this is relatively unimportant. Uh, the key point to note is you'll never really have the strongest army in the game, but you'll have strong enough to beat both the Ottomans and Russia. It's kind of a matter of doing so before a more powerful nation comes after your lands, like France, Ottoman, Mameluk, region, whoever wins, or the Timurids. Uh, you can bleed a lot of troops on forts. Specifically, if you throw two forts here, the Ottomans tend to really want to siege these two down, because otherwise they dominate this region. You can compile your forces behind them, strike, kill them on one fort, because in order to get there, they'll have to march all this way, and then repeat. Uh, that's how I won the war against the Ottomans. And Russia itself is not too big of an issue. You just call in your allies. If you've got a strong ally, you let them siege. You focus on killing the Russian armies. Take the forts first. Once you've got defensive ideas, the amount of attrition you get is significantly less, whereas the attrition they get is significantly higher. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll just throw up the regions again. The Pontic Steppe was the hardest region to get a hold of because you really have to kick out the Ottomans from the Crimea and take some land from whoever's won the fight in the Caucasus. Uh, Caucasia, I guess. Um, Central Asia involved a bit of a war just to gain these lands, because Russia never got there. 
Uh, other than that, you, yeah, conversion. I took all the conversion ideas once the um, Protestant Reformation. I, I obviously supported the Catholics. That helps with conversion strength. Uh, but once they were dealt with, I pretty much went um, as intolerant of heretics as I could to get the conversion strength. Uh, had a good uh, missionary advisor, kept good stability, and it was relatively easy to convert. I was pretty much sitting here for the last 10, 15 years just converting. Uh, that's about it. I do recommend uh, at some point you try and either convert cultures or do accepted cultures. Uh, my experiments, Muscovy, Muscovite culture is really good. Um, obviously, these are left from the other ones, but Polish, Pomeranian, Lithuanian, Westphalian was useless. I would have actually rather gone for Novgorodian. Um, that's about it. Don't forget to make states so that you can actually exploit it. Muscovy and Novgorod in this region up here, South Karelia, have a lot of money for you. And uh, in terms of trade, keep your trade probably in the Baltic Sea trade node. You could shift it to Novgorod once you kill them. But if you leave it here, you can pull money from Cacao. I never really had um, problems making money from trade. It was more taxes as devotion rose and fell. But that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions or comments about this, let me know. Check out the Teutonic How to Join the HRE Guide in case uh, I didn't do a good enough explanation. Please subscribe and check out all the other guide videos. I've pretty much got guides for most countries and lots of achievements. Also feel free to suggest any achievement guides you want in the description below. Bye for now.